still looks like a bug. <laughs> That's why I got my horse. You don't know me. You don't know me. This is. It looks like. Get on your horse. It looks the same. That's a wrong horse. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Go to classroom. Go to classroom. Stop insulting my awesome mount. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Now it's time for the classroom. Advice <laughs> on making gold via the auction house, professions, oh, yeah. and more. Okay, since Hava's not here, we don't have any pets. But, uh, still, she's got a, a lot. We got a lot of pets coming out in 6.2. Um, but we do have some posts to go over. And, uh, this one comes out of the Profits Forums. Uh, you can go check out Profits.tv. And uh, this one comes from uh, somebody called Ninja Rock. So, if going through this one, he is more talking about um, some of the drops that he has found. Um, on this list, what drops do you like the most? Um, well, uh, not really a lot of them. I used to like Gothic. Okay, so, uh, he's, he's, uh, essentially saying... Um, well, uh, Gothic, Jazzerant, um, I never looked up how to say that. Gothic, um, Regal, Embraces of the Bear, Jazzerant, Belt of the Wolf. Uh, the Regal is good, um, Regal but these are right? all yep. found in Oldemon, and the, right. the Chromite used to be really good, um, but uh, the Regal, according to his list, are the only ones other than uh, a pattern that he found that uh, he's showing or selling for for much of anything. Um, but yeah, he's he's found this list and put together what he got from thirty minutes and a couple runs in Oldemon, and Oldemon is one of the best places to farm. It's one of the things that I've always wanted to do a guide on. I've kind of been saving it for um, my list. I will be doing it shortly, probably, um, because it's it's like Zulfurak, honestly. It's uh, in that with Zulfurak, you can go in there and in five minutes um, you can get 150 mobs rounded up and then AoE everything down. Well, in Oldemon, everything's... I mean, it's a big, big dungeon, but you can just run through and they just chase you. And you can stop at every boss if you want to make sure that nothing runs back, because that happens if you go too quickly. Um, but... Essentially, you just run through the whole place, kill everything, and loot, and it's just a ton of gear. Um, mm -hmm. And you can bring a miner, because there's, I think, three different types of ore. You can bring a skinner, because there's a whole bunch of stuff you can skin. It's just great. Um, and there's a whole bunch of cloth. Uh, it's, it's just... Okay, transmog. Lots. Okay, transmog. Okay, cloth. Okay, or okay, leather. Nothing great. Um, did he? Except for he said um, the Jinsu sword he got out of there, which he's showing for a hundred twenty k, which I've never. I've never gotten that out of there, but good job. Um, anyway, uh, the the good thing about 
about Ultimon, though, is like Zulfrak, even though nothing is really awesome, it's not like um, AQ20 where you're farming right. stuff that can sell for a thousand or two thousand or five thousand gold, you're getting a ton of stuff that sells for a hundred or two hundred or three hundred or four hundred gold. So, yeah, go for Ultimon. I'm down. Yeah, and it, and it's low beat, it's yeah. low beat stuff. So um, go for Oldemon and then go for Zulfrak, and they're different tiers. So you're not going to be yep. overlapping in the gear you get. Anyway, what were you going to say? Sorry. No, that that's all right because you know running a lot of the old content really can be a good idea. You know, for like the for like the uh, the Mage Weave or, or Silk like uh, ways it got posted. It's a matter of timing, which right now would be a good time. You know, not everybody's buying their 90s. A lot of people are still leveling up their characters. So, get some Mage Weave, get some Silk Cloth, put that in. And, no, I, I'd, I'd still think some of the prices here, some of the prices are about right. Some of the prices here may be a little high. But yeah, Aldemon, as a high character, as a top level character, going into Aldemon is really a good thing to do. Now, moving on a little bit here. Have you used Zygor guides while leveling? I haven't. I haven't. I I don't buy guides. Um, I've seen videos on it. Um, and it looks useful. It looks useful enough. Um, unlike unlike Tycoon, they both Zygor and Tycoon both do a lot of affiliate marketing. Zygor is um, a little bit more honest with theirs, though, so I don't right. really have anything negative to say about them. Um, I just don't pay for guides. Well, Zygort, well, I did, mainly because when, uh, when me, me and, uh, Beefinator were, uh, doing, like, uh, doing some leveling up, he had... He really introduced me to Zygor guides, and Zygor was pretty good. Um, I just got their basic leveling guide stuff. But recently, they came out with a uh, gold making guide. So, if you if you look at this guide, there, Rickles, there's quite a few pictures that uh, I put here in the notes. What do you think about how this guide is laid out? Um, it looks pretty I pretty good in that it has um it's got farming, it's got gathering, um and it's 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 got your you basic know, farming, stuff. gathering, crafting. Um, it's it's got a friendly user interface. Um, so that's one thing that a lot of the uh, the things like uh, that's one of my complaints with uh, Trade Skill Master. While I don't think anything can really compete with Trade Skill Master, it's just not pretty. Um, this has pretty icons, and right. um, you can see, oh, look, farming. Okay, I'll click on that. Crafting. Okay, I need to craft something. I'll right. click on the test tube. Okay, I need to auction something. All right, I'll click on the auction house thing, and this means I'm going to go auction something. Um, and, oh, look, a drop-down. There's nothing else to do, so I'm going to click on the drop-down. And so I, it's, it's, a, 
I like it. I like it so far. Um, if you... If you were going to pay for a guide, um, if you had the money to spend on a guide and you wanted to and you had something against Trade Skill Master, um, go for Zygor. I will always and forever recommend Trade Skill Master. Even if you get Zygor, get Trade Skill Master because, um, it's it's the best out there. You can't really go wrong with Trade Skill Master. It just does things that nothing else can. Um, but yeah, this looks good. I'm excited to try it out. Well, kind of the thing that... Uh, I can't get my... Hmm. Anyway, kind of the thing that I want to say here is... It's a good way to get uh, get you started out because, or especially with add-ons, because add-ons in themselves can be a little bit confusing. And if you if you trust Cygor enough to get this, and they're not like um, the other guys where you have to pay for their stuff. Zygor is a lot uh, more trustworthy because they they kind of know their stuff. So yeah, right now there, there's a trial version. Uh, if you go check out the Zygor guide site. What they have is a trial version, and you can go get that on uh, on their site. But uh, there's a little something going with the 6.2 with the uh, herbs. All right. What do you think about milling them into... Uh, some uh, new inscriptions. Well, I've, what about the way that they look right now? I've always been a big fan of um, just buying up cheap herbs and um, milling, you know, just setting myself up and milling for hours and hours and hours. Um... Because, you know, if, if, or, or the farming for hours and then milling for more hours. <laughs> um, right. But so what this is doing is rather than milling five at a time, um, to get 2.4, uh, uh, thingamajiggers, um, right. you can, what are they, what? Oh my god, embers, what do, you, what do you get when you mill? I'm completely blanking, help me out. <laughs> oh, I can't think either because I don't, uh, I don't do Alessander. a lot of milling. Alessander, what do, what do we get? <laughs> what do we get? Someone! <laughs> anyway, um, rather, rather yeah, than they're, they're milling, rather than, um, milling five at a time, you mill twenty at a time. Um, and so that's right. just going to be fantastic. It's only going to take 10 mils to mill a full stack of 200 rather than um, 50 mils. Um, so, huzzah, or 40 mils, whatever. They say, um, uh, they say a time equals money, right? Or time is money, right? <laughs> How about a one-second cast? No. Oh. Yeah, the other one's 1. 1.5, right? Yeah, yeah. They, they reduced it. Oh. Well, that is yeah, also great. Yeah, you get great. the pigment's the ink. Well, we can't think of huh. what the pig, pigment's name is. Um, yeah, that they reduced the time on that. So that's really, really cool. 
and that way you're not standing around. If you put the two together, you're saving a lot of time. This only works for uh, Fireweed, Frostweed, Gorgon, Flytrap, Nagrand, Aerobloom, Starflower, and Talidor Orchid. Her this flowers. is not a replacement for um, milling. milling. It's right. just math. It's a specific inscription spell for um, mass mill these items. Um, so it's not replacing your mill ability. Right. Um, which is also good because um, then you would have stacks of um, more than 20, or you would have stacks of 19 in your bags when um, you only wanted stacks of, you know, you're used to having stacks of three or four of the smaller items when you're leveling up, and you'd have to get to stacks of 20 to level up, and that would just get really expensive. Yes, that would. Yes, that would. And I think this way... Um, I think this way you save still a lot of time. So, if people want to do this, you know, you're not going to get a whole lot of stacks even just going out into your garrison and going out into the world. Could this be a boost to herbalism? Eh, maybe not. <laughs> um, you know what? It's, it's an incentive for people to buy. You know, because I don't buy as much as I would because it just takes so long to mill. Um, but if it doesn't take as long to mill, I'm much more... I'd, I'd buy a lot more on the auction house. This is actually... That's a, that's a really good point. This is a big boost well, to herbalism. This, <laughs> uh, hmm. this is something to pay attention to. I, th I think uh, herbalism might make some gold here. <laughs> but that's something and to really pay attention to. And herbalism has the, uh, the... So herbalism has this, and herbalism also has the fell blights um, that they're getting dropped. Um, so herbalism is going to... You're, if, if you have an herbalist um, you're going to sell out of everything pretty much immediately as soon as you put it on the auction house is is my theory um, mm -hmm. come 6.2 just a guess just a guess just a guess just a guess you know we'll see what happens really but uh, I think oh and uh, for anyone wondering fell blights is a 10% drop rate Yes, it is, as of right now. And that is only found in the nodes that you can find out in Tanan Jungle. Mmm. So, okay, so what do you think is going to happen with Fellbloods? Um, well, Fellbloods, um, don't exist. At this point. I'm fell, saying, well, I'm saying fell, once, they, once they come out. No, fell bloods um, existed, and then um, the item ID for fell bloods was replaced by fell blights. All the comments and everything. Fell blights. Um, yes. Oh, fell. What's going to happen with fell blights? Um, I think uh, there's. There's going to be a lot of them. I don't right. know what recipes... I haven't stayed up to date on what recipes are going to use them, but it's I was going, actually okay. really disappointed on how many I got. I didn't get as many as I thought I would. I went out there on an herbalist and a miner on my gathering tune, and I just mined for a while, and I didn't get a whole bunch. Um, so, I got a, I got a lot of ore and a lot of herbs, um, I wasn't very geared, so I did have to avoid a couple of mobs, yeah. um, 
but because um, all the mobs were level 100 and they hit hard um, and my poor little tune hasn't that I took oh. out there hasn't raided very much but um, yeah it it uh, so that means that if there's a big enough demand uh, Felblights are going to sell they're gonna sell out and um, they're going to need people out there farming um, otherwise we're gonna have a pretty high price for Felblights yes. which means there's, it's it's going to be great for people who do go out there and farm. Here's the thing with fell blights. They're just the same as savage bloods. Okay, so wherever, wherever you see savage bloods and recipes, replace them with fell blights. So you better believe the demand is going to be absolutely flipping huge. Well, they're... Uh... Uh, they're the same as primal spirits. No, I'm not saying I'm not saying it in that term. I'm saying it in the term of recipes. Okay. 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 I'm saying it because fell blights are replacing savage bloods in recipes. That's why I'm saying that the the demand is going to be way high. So. Do you think that uh, alchemists could get in on this action of making fell blights? You think that they should, really? Well, I don't think they can. Um, well, right now they that's... can't. No, I'm, I'm saying, should they? Should Blizzard make it available to them? Oh, um... Because what my feeling is... <sighs> If the demand's going to be that high, and if Blizzard wants to take that demand down, they're going to have to get the alchemists involved. Huh. That's that's interesting, and I wonder if um, maybe that was their plan in changing it to being a gathering profession. Like they they wanted the demand to go down initially so they said you know what all gatherers can can get fell blight so we don't have 5000 gold uh fell blights initially so they're only going to cost 500 gold initially rather than 5000 10000 gold that's possible but, but that means in the end after a couple months they're only going to be 10 gold 20 gold so I, I, I think know. I think what the incentive here is to get people out of the garrisons and into yes. a Tanan jungle. So Absolutely. I think you're gonna see a lot of people switch their professions again to gathering instead of having two um two crafting professions. So crafting hmm. So if you take them out of two crafting professions and you you place one of your crafting profession with a gathering profession. Could we see? Um, could we see crafting uh, go up a little bit in price? If the if that happens. Um. It's yeah. something to think about. <laughs> It certainly is something to think about. I like, I like how every change that happens, you're always thinking, well, what, like, this is a small change. How is this going to affect things? I love it. I love it. Yes. It, it's kind of the ripple effect. You know, one change could subjugate to another, could subjugate another thing, uh, or change something else. It could happen. I'm not going to say that it is. I'm not going to be, you know, dead set on it. But indeed, it could happen. We'll see what happens. Um, by the way, me and Hava did talk about a video that you made there last week. Or maybe a couple weeks ago about jewel crafting coming in 6.2 
What are your thoughts right. on this jewel crafting profession when it comes out in 6.2? Um, I, I'm worried because essentially they're requiring for epic gems, excuse me, um, for epic gems, they're changing, um, they're, they, they've changed, alright, so, uh, a while back, they had, oh, excuse me, I had the hiccups all of a sudden. Um, a while back, they had, um, when they first introduced the rare gems, I said, oh my gosh, gems are only selling for 20 gold to 100 gold, but um, in 6.0, gems are going to sell for 2,000 gold. And everyone was like, no, that's impossible, but you know what they are. They're selling for 1,000 to 2,000 gold. Because the materials cost that much. It costs 150 ore plus some Taladite Bloods. Well, now, they're, um, the reagents for the rare, or the epic gems that they're introducing um, are Fel Blights and um, Taladite Crystals and um, one of the graders, and it's just, it's awkward in that people don't, if you already have, all right, so everyone has Talodite crystals. Like at this point, you have more Talodite crystals than you need at this point in the expansion. So right. the value of those is less than the ore. Like, they're already crafted, so the value of the Talodite crystals is less than the ore used to create it. And the Feld lights, while they're going to be very expensive early on, um, I really see those not being any more expensive than uh, selling for... 30 gold later, like, um, so, with 15 fell blights used to create one of the epic gems, um, that's, uh, 300 gold, um, you know, 300 to 400 gold charge, in addition to 100 to 300 gold for the Talodite crystals, and then, you know, just bring your own greater gem and, you know, 500 gold for an epic? That's, that's what I'm saying. So 500 gold for an epic versus 2,000 gold for a rare? That's just awkward to me, where, you know, why are the epics going to be cheaper than the rare? Like, it I I don't I don't know. I feel like the epic should be and and even I it, it, I don't know. Be, it just yeah, it, <laughs> it it might if you're going to make money from epic gems, sell them early because it's going to be awkward later on. When when competition starts coming in on Epic Gems. I think you'll always be able to make money on Epic Gems, but it's going to be awkward to be profitable on jewel crafting later because there's, it's just... Uh, I don't know. It's, it's the first time where the Epics might actually be cheaper than the rares. It Well, that's possible, but these Epics are always going to be needed throughout 6.2 throughout Hellfire's Citadel raid so I don't know I'm, I'm going to be kind of nervous about jewel crafting just uh, you know really mm -hmm. but um, we'll see what happens I mean 
I, I would agree. Any, yeah. Anything that's new is going to be on demand, and people will buy them early at really high prices. So that, yes. that would be a good thing. But, no, I would agree that uh, it's going to be a little bit nervous uh, going into later on into the expansion. So, I, oh, I don't... Oh, and that... That was that was the the one other thing that I said in the video for those who who uh, haven't watched it yet. If if you do sell them right away for people, it's uh, plus seventy five rather than plus fifty. Um, so if you're buying your rare gems for a uh, thousand to fifteen hundred, how much would you be willing to s spend on a plus fifty percent boost to your gems? probably 2,000 to 3,000 gold. Um, mm -hmm. If you go out and you actually farm up the fell blights um, and and you have the Taladite crystals, I mean, a, a Mythic Raider has 10 gem slots by now, 5 or 10 gem slots. So a Mythic Raider, if you farm up this stuff, you could be making 30,000 gold from one person, you could be selling ten gems to one person, um, and not spending any money, um, essentially, other than a little bit of ore, uh, you know, a hundred Taladite crystals, which is a decent, okay, that's a decent amount of ore, but, um, yeah, I go, go and farm up some Felblights, and you're good to go, worst case, buy what you don't have. And you're still making a huge amount of profit. You're making at least 50, 60, 70% profit um, if you sell these in the first week. So just just load up, farm up a whole bunch of herbs and ore in the first week, and uh, craft a bunch of gems. It does require 700 jewel crafting, though. So uh, if you have a jewel crafter, um, you could make a bunch of money in the first week. It, yep. Yep, 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 yep. It's going to be a lot of front-loading and jewel crafting in 6.2, I think. A lot of front-loading. Okay, last but not least. Gold Queen came out with 19 guaranteed ways to make World of Warcraft gold. Okay, are you ready? It's all about selling. A challenge mode gold boost. For those that are of epic raiders that want to go into, that uh, want to sell their challenge modes, uh, challenge mode runs, especially tanks and healers, this could be a good, good thing. Rickles, number two on the list, is Glyphs. Absolutely. Liz <laughs> always takes a little bit of time, and she does have a uh, uh, another thing she's been sending out on um, twenty or how to pay for your um, how to pay for your uh, subscription with just glyphs. So that was that was one thing I wanted to talk about. Also, in addition to this. Um, is there any profession that you don't think she she talks about about everything? Is there any profession that you don't think you could pay for your WoW subscription with? That is there any profession, including the secondary ones that you don't and tertiary ones that you couldn't make twenty thousand gold a month with? First aid. <laughs> you don't. You don't think you can make twenty thousand with first aid? That would. That would first I, aid. All right. Probably agree with you there. <laughs> yeah. That, that 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 would be the most obvious one. You know, cooking you could. Um, yeah. Most any other crafting profession you could. Um, archaeology would would also be in question. I think those would be the only. Too. But everything else, 
you could make 20,000 gold in a day, in an hour, if you wanted to. How about uh, selling portals for mages? That could be a good thing because you see that in trade chat like every day somebody's looking to go somewhere. And yeah. they would they would pay just, to get to get in a group. Yeah, just whenever you're in the storm wind, have a have a I'm I'm down with that. I'm kinda Orgamar. There are a couple of things in here where I'm just kinda like, eh, why sell that? That's just part of like being a friendly player where you like right. yeah why sell that but at the same time like have a macro where you know selling portal to blah 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 um 20 gold 25 gold 30 gold whatever um whenever you're in stormwind or orgrimmar or near your garrison just hit that macro and you're good yeah you know, that, that, that's kind of a good point that Alice Hunter put up there. People expect portals for free, and they do not pay for them. The one problem I have with that is that, um, really, you don't charge for portals, but not everybody does uh, give tips. But there are people out there that do give tips, and that's what you're looking for. Uh, now, we're running out of time here, big time, so I'm going to go through this uh, a little bit uh, more quickly. Uh, Enchanting Scrolls number four, and stop me if you want to talk about something. Uh, Transmog Armor is number five, which that should be lower on the list. Uh, so, limited supply items at number six. So, to raiders who need flasks and potions, what you got? On unlimited supply items, um, there's some great videos out there. Uh, you want to go to uh, Iron Forge, you want to go to Dalaran, um, and there's an Outlands run um, for limited supply items. Um, and those are the three main ones. They are less profitable than they used to be, um, but uh, great things to just load up on once a week, once a month. Okay. No, th that's true. Uh, sell to casuals who need green leveling armor. That's number eight. Number nine, sell items needed by achievement hunters, which is a pretty good idea. Uh, sell taxi service with your two-seater flying mount. Not bad there. Eh? Eh? I kind of... Same thing with Alessander of, like, people expect that for free. I don't know what you're talking about there, yeah, but yeah, it's maybe a, if you have maybe if you have the gold to back it up and you can say, I made 10,000 gold in a month selling taxi service, sure. All right. Yeah, it, it's one of those, um, I want to say, um, People will give you money for it, but you're not uh, expecting money for it. Uh, sell arena boost services. Sell gems and jewel crafting services. We went over that for uh, the future of that. Sell copper rods to idiots. Her words, <laughs> not ours. That one, that, one made, that one made me laugh when I first read it. Also, if anyone... I. I'd actually just like to put this out there. If anyone out there sells arena boost services and does makes their primary source of income by um, doing arena, uh, send us an email. We'd, we'd like to talk to you. That's, that's something I don't have a lot of experience with because I've never really been a big PvPer, but I've heard of a lot of people making a ton of gold just doing arena and and that stuff so give us send us an email on uh the website we'll give you that uh information here when we get at the end of this actually uh sell herbs and ore gathered at your garrison that's kind of uh really low prices there um sell level 25 battle pets to that 
they don't have to be level 25, my dear. They sell at any level. <laughs> uh, uh, but level 25, you get more gold. Uh, a lot more? No? Yes. I, I think it's... You know, if, if you're going to say yes there, then I'm going to say that's a pick-and-choose type market. Because a, a lot of pets, they don't sell... There, there's not a great variation between 1 and 25. But there are maybe some out there that are a great variation between 1 and 25. Okay. If you get what I'm saying. And, ev and mm -hmm. everybody's different. So rare and valuable crafting materials sell so someone no one else is selling. Sell so funny items like fish off hands. <laughs> sure. If you want to. <laughs> and and here's re the really key point at the end of all this. Number 19. Sell at the right time of day and on the right days. So, Kira, what is the right time of day, and what is the right day? Basically, it's raid night for a lot of things. Um, or, or raid days, raid nights, whatever. So, go check out the UndermineJournal.com. They have, a, like, a hot... Uh, a... Oh, what do I want to say? Like a hot graph and a cold graph on when and when things sell, on what things sell, and on what time things sell. That's a good place to go. Just saying, mm -hmm. that's a good place to go. And the funny thing is, it's different. It's different. It's usually the same, but it's different for certain items. So, check that out. Agreed. Let's get out of here. Sam. All right, people. <laughs> it's time to end the podcast now. So, how can the players get a hold of you? <laughs> yeah, we got about three minutes left in the stream, so I say we squeeze this in just right. And this is going to be a lot of fun doing this. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll start out. How about that? You All right. Can, you can find the show live at 3 p.m. on tunein.alphageekradio.com and on the TuneIn app. That's Eastern Standard Time. You get the next one. Okay. And you can also find us live on yourwowmoney.com forward slash live at 2.30 p.m. Saturdays or whenever we're uh, streaming. Yeah, or whenever we're streaming. If you don't want to listen live, you can hear us on Stitcher, iTunes, and other podcast apps. And if you're on the site, you can use the speak pipe at the bottom of the page to send us a message. You can find us on Twitter at Your Wild Money, Facebook at Your Wild Money Cast, and at LinkedIn.com slash N slash Your Wild Money. You get the next and two. You can, okay. You can find me on YouTube.com forward slash uh, Your... <laughs> no. Sorry. You can, not Your Wild Money. That's not me. Uh, <laughs> YouTube.com forward slash WTB Gold Wow. Um, or on Twitter at Ryan A. Eccles, that's E-C-K-L-E-S. Or I'll take the last two. Uh, for Lady right. Hava, you can find her on twitch.tv forward slash Lady Hava, at Lady Hava on Twitter, or you can email her ladyhava at yourwamani.com. For me, you can find me on youtube.com forward slash kerosene kid, at caro underscore gold, Caro hashtag one three nine seven in game, or you can email me Caro at yourwowmoney.com. And by the way, the, the YouTube channel, uh, there is a song called Kerosene Kid up there. Uh, you might have to scroll down a little bit to find mine. Just saying. <laughs> so I might change that later. I'm not certain. 
<laughs> I'm not sure. I might, I might have to do that. Oh, man. Yep, three Saturdays in a row. I gotta do that this week. It's gonna be hard, but whatever. Anyway, I hope we gave you guys some good ideas about getting some gold uh, this week or in 6.2. You can go enjoy Heroes of the Storm. That's what uh, we've been doing on the Twitch channel. And uh, we'll see you guys next week, hopefully with a full cast of characters. So that way you guys can get your gold on. How about that? We'll see you next week, guys. Have fun. Can we say under the gun, or can we say under the gun? This podcast <laughs> recorded before a live internet audience. To learn how to listen and watch live, visit tunein.alphageekradio.com.